Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite Jerry Brockheimer movies. Mr. Jerry Brockheimer. I just saw the movie uh, Moonfall today. It was so bad. But for some reason I was thinking of Jerry Brockheimer. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Did I ever do a list on Jerry Brockheimer? I don't think I have. So, fuck it. Let's do that. Uh, Jerry Brockheimer is one of the most famous producers out there he's got his own studio and everything he's produced a lot of television shows and movies maybe i'll do television shows next but these are the jerry brockheimer produced movies that i think are my personal favorites uh his movies are definitely not for everyone but i enjoy quite a bit of his movies and i have some guilty pleasures for a few of them so let's get to it here's my top 10 favorite jerry brockheimer movies and as always before top 10 list you gotta have your Honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Parts of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest, Parts of the Caribbean, At World's End, Days of Thunder, Twelve Strong, National Treasure 2, Book of Secrets, Bad Boys, and King Arthur. All decent enough movies. Uh, just come in the top ten list. But in my top ten is my number ten. My number ten is Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys for Life came out in 2020. The year that barely any good movies came out. But great fucking movie. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence are back as Mike, Larry, and Marcus. Uh, back on the case. And they're funnier and more enjoyable than they were in the first two. Uh, the first two was... Michael Bay, so that explains a lot, but I fucking love Bad Boys for Life. I thought this was a damn wicked movie with great comedy, great chemistry between Lawrence and Will Smith, and great action, great music, just, it was all around just a fucking fun movie, and I can, I can actually see what was happening, because Michael Bay, he's got such bad editing and just such bad comedy, this was funny, this was very well laid out, and I actually would love to see a Bad Boys 4. I really would, by the same team who did this, same writers, same director, but Bad Boys for Life, man, fucking great movie. I did not expect it to like it either, because Bad Boys 1 and 2, Bad Boys 1 is is fine, like, I, I don't hate Bad Boys 1, I, I think it's an okay movie, I think it's fine, Bad Boys 2 is a little ridiculous, because it gets so long, it's like two and a half hours, I'm like, oh my god, but um, Bad Boys for Life, I knew Michael Bay wasn't coming back, but I still didn't have, like, hopes for it, you know, I, I enjoy Will Smith, and I enjoy Martin Lawrence, for the most part, uh, I was just never a huge Bad Boys fan, even though I grew up with those movies, because my brother fucking loves them, but I watched it, and I, I really enjoyed it, I had a lot of fun with it, I probably had the most fun with that movie than most movies of 2020, so, yeah, good job. Number nine is The Rock, speaking of Michael Bay, The Rock, this is his best movie, easily, easily, I, I'm not a big fan of Michael Bay's movies. Like, I'm curious about Ambulance, though. Like, like, that comes out in about a week or two. Is Jake Gyllenhaal also? Like, maybe. The Rock is his best fucking movie. Though. This is easily his best. It's his most fun movie. It's Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, Ed Harris. Nick Cage having a blast. Sean Connery is just, just born to play a role like this. Warner's go home and fuck the prom queen. Just love it. It's fucking great. It's got decent enough action. It, 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 it's about these people taking over Alcatraz. Then a guy who escaped from Alcatraz has to go with this officer to t catch these terrorists and stuff. Like, it's so ridiculous, but it works. And it, it's enjoyable. It's got fun characters. It's always moving. It's always at a good pace. It's, it's the rock. It's got the shaky cam, some bad editing. There's some cringe in here because it's Michael Bay, but it's damn good. It's fun as hell. It's a fun, entertaining 90s action film. And, yeah, it's, it's actually a Michael Bay film. You can actually say, wow, that's good. <laughs> Number eight is a film I grew up with. My sister always showed me this movie, and I have no shame, no shame at all to say that I like it. That's Coyote Ugly. <laughs> I like Coyote Ugly. I, I like Coyote Ugly. It, 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 it's kind of like a chick flick. It is a chick flick, but I like it. But this girl named Violet goes to New York to be a songwriter. She gets a job at a bar. And it's called the Coyote Ugly, where girls like serve drinks and they dance and sing on the on the bar and stuff. It's almost like burlesque, but done better. Well, burlesque came out way after, but burlesque was almost like Coyote Ugly, done horrible. <laughs> this movie is fun. It's fun. You got a fun cast. You got Maria Bello, John Goodman, Pepper Paraboa, um, other people. But yeah, great music. It, it, it's a fun movie. It's got good comedy it's got a decent enough romance nice songs like it was always fun i i grew up with this movie i think this movie came out in like the year 2000 my sister had the vhs tape we always used to watch it uh i remember i used to watch like happy gilmore and then she would watch kyrie ugly after we do like yeah it was, we we just 
I grew up with it, and I, I still enjoy it when I watch it. So, yeah, not ashamed. I like it. Number seven, Top Gun. Danger Zone. This is 80s cheese at its greatest. Excited for Top Gun Maverick. That looks awesome. Great movie, though. Top Gun. It's about fighter pilots kicking some ass. Just got some volleyball. Them oiled up. Very homoerotic. I'm okay with it. It's okay. Tom Cruise. Tom Skerritt. Uh, you got Meg Ryan. You got uh, Val Kilmer as Iceman. Great stuff. Uh, all are great. Great action sequences. Some of the most badass soundtrack ever. Danger Zone. Take my breath away. Just, it's, it's fantastic. It is so cheesy, but in all the best ways. It's, it's fucking Top Gun. Number six, though. This, we're going from cheese to serious. Remember the Titans. Who we are, so we tell them. So we tell them. <laughs> I love Remember the Titans. Um... I remember it was first shown this movie when I was about ten years old, in a classroom when we they were show they showed us this movie, and when I watched it, I went and bought the DVD of it and I watched it all. It was just it's such a good movie. It's got a great story about race and it's a great story about a football team who becomes like this undefeated football team. It's also about this coach. He's a black coach at a high school that, that where there's a lot of prejudice, but these white players and black players come together and they become good friends and they become a team and they work together it's, just, it's, it's about teamwork and camaraderie and just togetherness it's fantastic denzel's fantastic i love denzel in this movie the relationship also between uh julius campbell and uh gary bertier just that, that, that friendship's just so good uh ryan gosling is in this movie too he's great uh What's his name? Uh, Will Patton is fantastic in this movie, too. Uh, he got a very young performance of Hayden Panettiere. She's great. Uh, everyone's good. The football's great. I love a good football movie. This is definitely one of the best. It's just, the tennis. just so good. Number five, Enemy of the State. Tony Scott's uh, Enemy of the State. Uh, I love this movie. This is a movie I watch every couple of years, and I always love it. You got Will Smith and Gene Hackman. One of my favorite Gene Hackman roles. Right there with, like, Unforgiven and French Connection. I uh, love this movie. I love a good, like, government conspiracy movie that isn't stupid. This is actually, like, very clever, very well directed, and very well paced. I love Will Smith so much in this movie. I love the intense action sequences. I love the big cast they got. They, 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 this cast is huge in this movie. You got like John Voight. You got Jason Lee, Jack Black, Seth Green, Scott Glenn, just in uh, Regina King. Like the cast is so massive in this movie, and it, it just freaking works. And it all leads to like one of my favorite endings. Just such a great movie. If you love, like, good government conspiracy movies, this is one of the best. It's so good. Number four, one of the most underrated live-action Disney films. It's so underrated. National Treasure. I know it did so well. I think uh, audience-wise people love it, but, like, it, critics were not very nice on it. I, I love these National Treasure movies. I love the first National Treasure, though. I, it's, it's just, it's, it's a silly idea, but it's just, it's taken so seriously that... It just fucking works. And, like, you got, like, Nicolas Cage, and they're looking for this treasure that's, like, hidden on the back of the Declaration of Independence and stuff. And it's a it's a treasure of the Freemasons. It's, it's, it's so good. It's so interesting. It's another, like, it's a treasure hunting movie. I love it. A good treasure hunting film. And just Nick Cage and Sean Bean is the villain. You got, like, um... What's his name? Uh, fucking Harvey Keitel is the police officer. Uh, another John Voight. John Voight is the dad. Diane Kruger is the love interest. Justin Bartha is the comedic sidekick. It's just, it, it, it's so good. And I again, this is another one I had like the DVD of, and I always just watched on repeat. It's just, it's such a fun movie. I love it. Uh, number three, uh, Crimson Tide. Another Tony Scott film. Gene Hackman, Denzel. I, mean, I can tell Tony Scott loves his Gene Hackman and Denzel. Uh, this movie is incredible. It, it's a great submarine movie, and it's also a great movie about choosing sides. That they're meant to nuke something, nuke a village or something, a city. You know, nuke a city, and they are about to get a transmission, but the transmission gets cut out, and they don't know what to do. Gene Hackman thinks they should just uh, carry on and nuke the city, but Denzel thinks no, they should fall back and wait to get the message. But there's this like conflict about like if we give if we don't 
nuke the city, a World War Three can happen. But then Nezel's like, but if we do nuke and we're not supposed to nuke, a World War Three can happen that way. There's so much conflict in this movie. Then a mutiny happens, and it's all these different sides of these different crews on which side they should be on. And it's it's so interesting. It's very claustrophobic. It's very intense. And it's all done through like dialogue and performances. This movie relies so strong on its acting. And Gene Eggman and Denzel Washington are both incredible in this movie. This movie doesn't work without those two. And they're both phenomenal in this movie. And the writing is at its best. This is Tony Scott, the, it, if he didn't do True Romance, I'd say this is like his best movie. It's just, it's so intense and it's so captivating to watch. And just, I love it. I absolutely love it. Sadly, number two, Crimson Tide's amazing, but it's no Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. Yeah, I know. Like, I love Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. This is probably the movie I've almost watched the most in my life. And it's not even my favorite movie, but I've probably seen it the most. It's just a fun, squash-buckling action-adventure action movie. These kind of movies are the films I watched the most growing up. Like uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, and The Three Musketeers, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future. Like, fun movies like that I just I watched on repeat. And that's why I watched like, Star Wars and Star Trek and stuff. I love good adventure films and adventure shows that... Just, like, I don't know. I was, a bold, I was a young boy. Just I loved all that fun action stuff and... I, I always loved Pirates. And when Pirates of the Caribbean came out and I saw in theaters, I just fell in love with the movie. And I even liked the two sequels. That's about it. But Curse of Black Pearl, it's incredible. It's one of the best. But number one, I love number one so much. It just holds very dear to me. And that's Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. Eddie Murphy's Beverly Hills Cop. Axel Foley's my favorite. This is my favorite uh, Eddie Murphy movie. I, I love it. I think it's so funny. I even like Beverly Hills Cop 2. 3. Uh -uh. Please don't make any more. <laughs> I know I think they're going to, but don't make any more. But Beverly Hills Cop is a great action comedy. And about Axel Foley, his childhood friend dies, and he has to go to Beverly Hills and investigate his murder and stuff. And he has to team up with these two Beverly Hills police officers who are, like, always by the books and stuff. And Axel Foley's more, like, from the streets and stuff, and he breaks the rules and all that shit. But he's also a very smart police officer. There's a lot of funny moments. There's also a lot of great action. I, I, I love this movie. I can watch this movie every day. It just it never gets tired for me. I, I, I love it. I love Eddie Murphy. I love, like, John Judge Reinhold in the movie. I love the villain. I, I, I love everything about it. I, it just it always puts a smile on my face. And I love this, the soundtrack, too. Just, yeah, it's fantastic. And out of Jerry Brockheimer produced movies, this, this is my favorite, easily. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was it. That was my top ten favorite Jerry Brockheimer movies. So, in the comment section below, please tell me, what are your guys' top ten favorite Jerry Brockheimer movies? Curious to know. Comment below. Let me know. And as well as fights video, please subscribe to the channel and join the dark side.